Alright guys, welcome back to another pickups video um, in which I've got some pretty cool stuff. I'm pretty happy with this little haul. Uh, I've got some original Xbox games. Uh, first time in quite a while that I've had a haul of uh, original Xbox games. It's some Japanese exclusives that were picked up for me by my good friend Adam Korolik uh, when he was on a recent trip to Japan, one of many. And uh, yeah, so he went on to some of the stores uh, obviously looking for stuff and uh, he was sending me pictures of games that I was after as well, or things that he thought that I might be interested in, and that was really, really helpful, and I really appreciate that. Thanks a lot, Adam. Got some really good uh, pickups here. And, uh, yeah, some um, PS4 stuff and uh, the like. So, yeah, uh, but I'll start with uh, one that I've kind of already shown, and that was uh, Sonic Mania Plus. Uh, got given this by Sega, and no less, when I went to their offices recently to see um, the builds of Shemi 1 and 2, uh, the re-releases, and... Uh, Give me a copy of this. This is really, really good. I um, guess everyone knows the backstory by now. It's kind of like a fan project. A guy that was working on some Sonic conversions made a new game in his own spare time with the original assets, and Sega commissioned him to make it into a full-on official release. And this is superb. A lot of variety, huge levels, uh, like a souped-up original Sonic game, and uh, it's my favourite one ever. Yeah, so that's really cool. So thanks again, Sega, for that. Um, so yeah, the Japanese exclusives. Let's 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 just dive straight into those. So yeah, I'm really grateful to Adam for doing this. So you know, it's really nice because obviously trying to get Japanese exclusives online, you're dealing with really quite high kind of postage, uh, you know, shipping costs on those games, and obviously you're going to be buying them separate. So that adds up quite quickly. So to get a nice bunch like this off of one trip. Uh, and just uh, we met up and obviously exchanged pickups. I also got him something a manual for a tennis game Yeah, it wasn't an equal swap, but anyway, here's some cool stuff. So yeah, we got uh, exoskeleton So uh, this is looks like a quite a fun kind of uh, third-person mecha kind of uh, run-and-gun style game It's got quite a lot of Japanese text on it, but uh, it looks quite simple gameplay So I think that I'll be able to play this with not too much problem. Uh, so yeah, Japanese exclusive on Xbox and um, looks all right, yeah, only for a few quid, I think. Yeah, not a lot. Goes for around 25 on eBay. Um, I got it for about eight quid, I think, complete. Obviously, all in really good condition. That's par for the course when getting Japanese stuff, especially from Japan. They really look after their stuff. I don't want to stereotype, but they do tend to seem to look after their stuff. Uh, it's obviously a compliment. Um, yeah, the next one is uh, Dree Who. Uh, this is a curious little game in which basically... You're this kind of gnome dude drilling. You're underground, it's a you know, 3D polygon. You're underground and you're just drilling. And uh, yeah, it seems quite repetitive. I don't know if that's going to focus. Is that focusing? Uh, but let's see, I haven't played this yet, but it looks from the gameplay footage that I've seen that it might be strangely addictive in that kind of uh, repetitive kind of uh, uh, way that some games can be. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, pretty uncommon. Again, Japanese exclusive. Um, it goes for around 45 quid on eBay. I think I got this for about 25. Um, so yeah, pretty good deal. Again, really happy to get some of these uh, Japanese exclusives off the list. Um, right, the next one is Shikigami no Shiru. Uh, so this, um, as I'm sure many people know, is a bullet hell shooter. Um, I'm not very good at them, but I do like them from time to time. And uh, yeah, this, look, this one looks pretty stylish, like wizards and warriors, dragons, that kind of thing. And uh, yeah, got it for a couple of quid. Bullet Hell Shooter. There we go. Next one is, this one's called Plus Plum 2. It's kind of like a um, Baku Baku game, you know, like uh, falling blocks, columns, tetris -y style game, that kind of thing. Puzzle. Falling blocks game. It's not focusing on near-up stuff, is it? Anyway, Plus Plum 2. Um, yeah, again, goes for around 15 quid online. Uh, got this for about 3 quid. So, can't say better than that. Uh, next one is Triangle again. Um, I have to confess, I don't know a lot about this one. I just thought it looked quite quite interesting. It seems to be sort of like a, a visual novel, but heavily based on kind of kind of music. Um, there's kind of musical elements and uh, kind of scales of notes uh, uh, in, in in parts of the gameplay. So I don't know if you have have to have any musical skill to play it. We shall see. Uh, but I imagine it's quite heavily text based, so this might be difficult to play. Um, but that goes for around ten quid online. Uh, I got it for a few quid. It's a double CD. Well, one CD is that a soundtrack? I imagine that's a soundtrack, yeah. So, nice. But yeah, just some curious uh, Japanese exclusives. Um, yeah, couldn't resist, couldn't resist. The next one is, 
<laughs> in this nice plastic case is Guilty Gear Isaku. Um, now again, Japanese exclusive on Xbox. I think this oh, is it upside down. No, uh, I think this might have come out on PS2 in the West. I'm not entirely sure. I think so. But on Xbox, uh, Japanese exclusive has been quite uncommon. Um, so yeah, happy to get that. I'm not a huge 2D fighter uh, fan these days. I used to certainly play a lot of them back in the day. But this one looks like a really nice one. It's team based, and uh, you could play it on Xbox Live back in the day. I'm not sure if uh, that'll still be possible. I'm sure there's some people keeping the original Xbox Live going. But uh, yeah, Guilty Gear is Saku. And uh, there you have it. So that is that one. Came with some kind of bump, kind of calendar. Again, it's kind of par for the course. You kind of expect um, Japanese games to have all the extra paraphernalia still included. And that is the case with all of these games that I've picked up. Next one is uh, Double Steel, The Second Clash. So this was... Um, uh, basically a sequel to Yakuza, uh, what was it called? Reckless 2, the Yakuza missions. Uh, yeah, I'm getting that wrong. Reckless 2, the Yakuza miss missions. Um, this was a sequel that we didn't get uh, in the West, uh, but it's really nice graphics. Um, yeah, really kind of shows you what the Xbox is capable of. Uh, it's really fun gameplay and uh, just, yeah, nice looking game. So happy to have that. And it has uh, it's quite a common theme, of course, the Japanese games that to feature uh, English writing. Um, on the boxes, they just kind of like the look of it. Kind of, it's the re the reverse of here, I guess. We do kind of, uh, you know, stylize uh, the use of uh, Oriental characters, and they do the same over there with Western, uh, with, with with our alphabet, I guess. So yeah, even games that have absolutely no English content on it at all will still have English text on the box because uh, they just like the look of it, I guess. But yeah, really fun game, really good looking. And um, how much was that? I can't remember how much that was, but it was a good deal. These were all a lot cheaper than you can get them online for. I guess uh, that was obviously the main benefit of uh, doing it this way. Oh, are we here already? Are we to this one already? Wait a second. Have I shown up right? <laughs> yeah, I'm losing track of what I've shown already because this one is uh, one of the holy grails for the original Xbox. Uh, it's one I've had my hand for a long time. Not just because it's very rare and expensive online, but it actually, that rarity is... Uh, a rare and expensive game that's actually also really good. Um, so this is uh, Metal Wolf Chaos. And uh, if you're an Xbox collector, you will probably know about this one already. But it is a giant mecha style uh, third person shooter. And uh, with destructible environments and uh, really high octane, uh, you know, crazy action. Uh, a pretty cool over the top storyline as well. Set at the end of this century and it's about... Um, you, you play as the US president who pilots the mech and uh, tries to see off the uh, rebellion led by the vice president. So there's a US civil war. And uh, this never got released in the West. I wonder why. Yeah, um, maybe. But uh, yeah, so quite a desirable title on the original Xbox because uh, it's actually awesome as well as not getting a release over here. So yeah, I've had my eye on this one for a long time. And um, yeah, lovely, lovely Metal Wolf Chaos. I'm so happy to get this. I was tempted to... Uh, see, this is what I mean. Pristine. They haven't even scratched the scratch card. Awesome. Yeah. Um, what was I saying? Yeah. Uh, anyway, but this is actually getting uh, re-released. Um, yeah, it's been announced uh, fairly recently that they're working on this uh, re-release for this coming out on PS4 and Xbox. But it's not going to be like a full-on remaster. I think they are doing some work to it. I've read that they are doing some work to the textures. Certainly the resolution is going to be improved. Uh, but yeah, this is finally going to get um, a release in the West via a re-release uh, soon, apparently. Uh, it's not out yet, but there is the original. Um, it's still it's now going for around 150 quid quite regularly on eBay, although it doesn't come up that often because it's, it's fairly uncommon. Um, but yeah, I got this for around 65 quid, I believe it was. So a huge saving on what it was going for online. That's why I hadn't picked it up online because I'm just not willing to pay that amount of money for games these days. Um, but really happy to have that in the collection. I've been after that one for a hell of a long time, so thanks again, Adam, for that. That wasn't the last that Adam picked up for me, though. That was all in Japan. He also allowed me to have something delivered to his home in America, uh, which would save me on shipping, because I knew he was coming over to visit soon. Um, so I ordered this to be delivered to his house, and that was Paranormal Activity, The Lost Souls. I think it's still, it's still sealed, but I certainly will be opening this. Um... Yeah, um, 
I've heard mixed reviews about it, you know, to be fair. Um, I've heard that it's not the greatest of the various scary games that are on PSVR, but scary games work really well in VR. Um, yeah, I believe, I, I have this theory, it's probably not, not some mass, massively original theory, but I think that the, the emotion of fear is so easily accessible because it has an evolutionary advantage. You know, through evolution, it would have served us well to be very aware of danger, to be easily aware, to be easily startled, to be easily kind of frightened into action, to avoid danger, to avoid predators, that kind of thing. So I think it's an evolutionary advantage to be scared easily. It's got to be. It's got to be something like that because how how can it be? How can you be so scared by media like films, games, things that you know are not real? They're not actually a threat to your actual physical being. It's just a fucking film. It's just a game, and yet it can get you so scared. Like with Resident Evil Seven, I couldn't play that game when I was by myself in the house. I had to wait for my girlfriend to be in the house so I could have someone to talk to whilst playing it so that I wouldn't get too scared. That's how effective scary games can be in VR. Um, so I'm, th I'm, I'm expecting this to be quite good, even though apparently as a game itself, as, as an actual game ex gameplay experience, it's not as good as some of the other scary games on PSVR, but it will have that eerie atmosphere that is so effective in VR. So looking forward to che checking that out. And again, yeah, US exclusive, didn't get a physical release in Europe, so I definitely prefer to have stuff on, on disc if I can help it. So that's, yeah, nice. Right, another PSVR game. This is a, a curious one. This is, um, I'll just show it first. This is Volume. Again, still sealed. I probably will open this, although I might buy it again digitally. Now, this is where the collector bug kind of comes into play. Uh, although I have had a bit of a clear out of a lot of my retro collection, I've still definitely got that collector bug. Because here I am collecting, uh, I paid, uh, I think, 30, 30 or 35 quid for this. For a game that you can get digitally when it's in the sale for about three quid. So I literally paid ten times as much as I could have got this digitally just because I wanted it in a box. Well, not just because of that. This is actually going to be quite an uncommon game. This is through limited run. Uh, games who, of course, I'm sure everyone knows, uh, do exactly what their name says. They do limited runs of games and put them out on disc and um, they don't do them again. That's it. Once they've done a run of it, that's it. So there was only a, however many copies of this made and then that'll be it. So yeah, uh, quite a, a desirable game for PSVR collectors, quite uncommon. So it's nice to have that. And it even came with, I'm not gonna be able to find it now, uh, some little, I don't know where I put them. It came with some little tags basically with a, a number each, copies individually numbered. Uh, so that's nice, yeah. But just nice, again, for collecting purposes. But what it is, is a, a little top-down stealth game. So uh, it's, you know, I think you can play it on the, uh, yeah, you can play it on the, on the normal, on the TV as well. Uh, but the VR mode just lets you kind of hover above this isometric um, kind of uh, maze that you're looking down on. And your job is to just direct your little guy through the maze and not get spotted. So it's kind of a stealth, kind of a Metal Gear Solid, you know, uh, hide around the corner, don't get caught type game. Uh, it looks quite addictive, actually. I've not played it yet, I have to confess. Um, because, uh, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to open this. Or if I'm just going to buy it again digitally in the sale, when it inevitably will be in the sale again at some point for three quid. So, uh, you know, keeping it sealed would probably put more than three quid value, uh, keep more than three quid extra value onto this as a piece to collect. So that might be the wisest thing to do is just buy it again digitally. Uh, but there you go, volume, nice. But I just love collecting for PSVR because it has become my new passion because, you know, I have been completely bowled over by PSVR, uh, absolutely smitten. And so it's become a new passion, so I'm really enjoying collecting for it. Although I am not going to go full set. I'll say this now. I think, is it Skill Jim? Somebody I've been watching recently who's gone full set on the PSVR, and that's impressive. But I don't think I'm going to do that. I'm just stick to the games that I genuinely have an interest in playing, and I do think this will be a lot of fun, despite <laughs> paying ten times as much as I can get it for digitally. What an idiot. What are we like as collectors, eh? Right, so, the next three games were picked up by my missus, my other half. Uh, she hasn't played the PS4 in a long time, but uh, when she does pick up games, she can be quite uh, spontaneous, uh, which is no bad thing. So she picked up a bunch of um, games the other day. Uh, first of all, we've got the Talos Principle, and she wouldn't mind confessing that she picked this up because there was a cat on the front cover. Oh, yes. Love them cats. But this is like uh, a puzzle game. 
kind of uh, walking around these uh, kind of ruins. Nice, yeah, pretty nice, you know, atmosphere, graphics, whatever. Uh, environments, rather. That's what I'm, word I'm trying to find. And it's just these kind of spatial uh, logic puzzles. And uh, it's pretty fun so far. Not a lot of variety. We've only played up about an hour of it so far. But, yeah, puzzle games are certainly something that uh, I crave from time to time. So that's a pretty good game. I can recommend that. 20 quid from a game. Again, quite impulsive. I'm sure you can get these cheaper online, but that's just how she do it. So the Talos principle. Uh, the next one is Torment. Torment, Tides of Numera. Now, uh, this was a, a um, an RPG that went through Kickstarter and uh, obviously got a physical release. It's a top-down isometric is um, RPG. Uh, yeah, they went through Kickstarter. Uh, number one most funded RPG, in fact, and uh, got that for 13 quid. She's not tried this yet, but yeah, it looks all right. Um, I have to confess, I don't know much about it. If you played this, let me know what it's like, but it looks pretty. Uh, it looks pretty. And the last one she got was uh, Ether. Or Ether, is it Ether, isn't it? Um, yeah, this is kind of a walking sim, really. Uh, you start off in this kind of spooky, dilapidated, um, abandoned, uh, you know, uh, theme park. And uh, you're just going around picking up uh, strands of a story so far that we haven't gone too far into it. But yeah, basically a walking sim, kind of atmospheric mystery style thing. Um, she's played a bit of that. I don't, think she's, I don't think she's massively impressed with that one, but there you go. That's what you do. Sometimes you just take a risk and see what happens. Right, this is the last pickup I want to show. And this is my new obsession. Uh, it is the Persistence on PSVR. Uh where do I start with this? By Fire Sprite Games. Um, it's another killer app for VR. Um, you know, it's up there with Resident Evil 7, uh, Skyrim, Super Hot. Uh, what else would you say? Is Wipeout VR. It's one of the killer apps. And um, it's more proof of the fact that VR can be so immersive, even though you, even if you're using a DualShock controller. So, you, you know, you'd think that disconnect. When you're using a DualShock controller, you obviously haven't got that kind of hand presence in the game. You obviously haven't got that one-to-one -one physical kind of feeling of having your limbs around in the game, which really helps a lot of games immersion. Even though you're using a DualShock controller and you sat down for this game as well, um, it's so immersive. It just works so well. Uh, the style of it, the action, uh, it's really good. And what can I... Okay, what, how to describe it? Um... People have been comparing it to this other game that's name I can't remember. Basically, it has um, uh, procedurally generated levels. So every time you die, the level is lay out, laid out in a different way. Um, but each level all, 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 always has its uh, key rooms and its important things that you need to go and do and see and upgrades you need to find and all that kind of stuff. But it's just the shape of the level changes every time. And as you progress, of course, you're collecting several different currencies that you then use to upgrade your character and your weapons and buy new stuff and upgrade those things that you've bought and the rest of it. So there's a lot of, um, uh, there really is a lot of customization for how you want to play this game. Do you want to be guns blazing, you know, a tank, or do you want to be stealthy, or this kind of other, you know. There's um, a fair amount of options to how to play it, but the atmosphere of it, the graphics are fantastic, uh, the sound design is amazing, it's really eerie. You know, you'll hear uh, enemies before you see them in the next room kind of thing. Um, I don't know if you're going to be able to see much from these pictures on the back. If it'll even focus. 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 It's really pretty. Really atmospheric. Really fun. Really addictive. Um, I've not finished it yet. But I have to say this is well, well up there on the PSVR must-haves list. Um, yeah. So happy to get that at launch and uh, support Fire Sprite and just so happy got this release. Oh my God, this is brilliant. Yeah, we have another killer app and uh, we've been looking forward to that one for quite a while. So it's finally come and it did not disappoint at all. Um, I might do a full video talking more about that in kind of more depth. I definitely want to do some more content about that game. That's it is really, really good. But anyway, that's a nice haul. So thanks again to Adam for picking up those Japanese games and uh, yeah, nice. It was a really good haul. Really, really happy to have uh, Metal Wolf Chaos finally as well. Typically, it's getting a re-release now. I've been after this for years. I finally get it on disc and the original copy, and it's coming out a better version on modern consoles. But it's not coming out on disc on modern consoles, and that's what counts. Because it's about the collecting, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. But that's it, guys. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.